war-torn to top earners, the rise of Ukrainian OnlyFans. In the midst of chaos and destruction, a new form of resilience has emerged. Ukraine, known for its sunflowers, its beautiful people. And now, OnlyFans a platform that has become a surprising beacon of hope and financial stability. Since the war began, Ukrainian women have flocked to the platform, seeking not just income, but a sense of control in an uncontrollable world. Why? To make money, of course, but also to reclaim their agency and independence. Bombed out buildings don't pay the bills. The devastation has left many with few options. But scantily clad selfies, in this economy, they just might. It's a new kind of survival strategy. Before the war, OnlyFans was a blip on Ukraine's radar, a niche platform for a select few. Now, it's a lifeline for some, a side hustle for others, a way to navigate through the turmoil. But one thing is clear, it's big business with thousands of profiles and millions of followers. And where there's big business, the government wants its cut. They're starting to take notice. But here's the thing. Right now, it's a legal grey area. Regulations are murky and enforcement is inconsistent. Are these women entrepreneurs or are they something else? The lines are blurred. The answer like a bad Tinder date, is complicated. It's a mix of empowerment and exploitation. The answer, like a bad Tinder date, is complicated. Navigating this new landscape is no easy task. So, buckle up folks, because we're diving deep into the wild world of Ukrainian OnlyFans. Exploring the highs, the lows, and everything in between. And trust us, it's about to get interesting. Stay tuned as we uncover the stories behind the screens. A billion dollar industry, Ukraine's only fans economy. Let's talk numbers, baby. The global adult entertainment industry is massive. We're talking billions with a B. And Ukraine, they're punching well above their weight. Exact figures are hard to come by. Why? Because, you know, it's not like the government is handing out OnlyFans Employee of the Month awards. But estimates suggest Ukrainian creators are raking it in. We're talking millions of dollars flowing into the country. This isn't just about girls next door making extra cash. This is serious money. Money that, until now, has been flying under the radar of the taxman. And that's where things get interesting. Taxman wants a cut. New legislation explained. Remember that legal grey area we talked about? The one where online content creators operated without much oversight? Well, the Ukrainian government is trying to clear things up. They want to bring more transparency and regulation to this booming industry. And by clear things up, we mean get their hands on some of that sweet, sweet OnlyFans cash. Yes, the lucrative earnings of online creators are now in the spotlight. Enter new legislation aimed at regulating and taxing online content creation. This means more paperwork and compliance for creators. The gist? If you're making money on OnlyFans, you're gonna have to start paying taxes. No more flying under the radar. Just like the rest of us schmucks with regular jobs. It's about leveling the playing field. Now, on the surface, this seems fair. Everyone should contribute their fair share, right? After all, why should only fans models get a free pass? They are earning substantial amounts, just like any other profession. But, like a cheap bottle of vodka, it comes with a nasty aftertaste. The new rules could complicate things for creators and impact their earnings. 
Loophole closed. No more hiding behind donations. Here's the thing. Right now, many Ukrainian OnlyFans models classify their income as donations. It's a clever loophole, but also incredibly vague. What's a donation? Who knows? And that's kind of the point. This new law, however, wants to put an end to all that ambiguity. It aims to clearly define what constitutes income from online content creation. And yes, that includes those donations from your adoring fans. The message is clear. If you're selling spicy selfies, you're running a business. And every good business pays its taxes, right? Well, not everyone's convinced. Section 5. From Kiev to California. How other countries tax sex work. Ukraine isn't the first country to grapple with the complexities of taxing the sex industry. This issue spans continents and cultures. It's a global issue, with countries taking wildly different approaches. Take Germany, for example. They've got a more, shall we say, pragmatic approach. Sex work is legal and taxed like any other profession. There are regulations, of course, but the government recognises it as a legitimate source of income. This means sex workers have access to social benefits and protections. The tax revenue generated is used to fund public services, making it a win-win situation for both the government and the workers. Then you've got the United States, where it's a whole different ball game. The legal landscape is fragmented. In some states, it's legal and taxed, providing a regulated environment for sex workers. In others, it's completely illegal, leading to underground markets and unregulated conditions. And then there's the whole IRS thing, which is a story for another time. The federal tax code doesn't always align with state laws. The point is, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Each country has to navigate its own unique set of challenges and cultural attitudes. And Ukraine's new law is going to have to navigate this complex landscape. It will be interesting to see how they balance regulation, taxation and social acceptance. Section 6. The UK Model Lessons for Ukraine's OnlyFans Law Perhaps the most relevant example for Ukraine is the UK. They've got a system where online content creators, including those on platforms like OnlyFans, are required to register as self-employed and pay taxes on their earnings. It's not perfect, of course. There are still debates about worker rights, transparency and the stigma surrounding sex work. But it's a system that's been in place for a while and could offer some valuable lessons for Ukraine. The key takeaway. Transparency is key. Clear guidelines, fair taxation rates and support for workers are crucial for any successful system. Section 7 beyond the bottom line. Impact on models and the economy. OK, so the government wants its cut. But what about the models themselves? How will this law impact their lives? On the one hand, it could provide them with some much needed legitimacy. No more hiding in the shadows. They could access social security benefits, healthcare and other perks that come with being a recognised part of the economy. On the other hand, there are concerns. Will the tax burden be too high? Will it drive some models underground? And what about privacy? These are all valid questions that need to be addressed. Section 8. Critics cry foul. Concerns and potential downsides. Not everyone's thrilled about this new law. Critics argue that it could do more harm than good. They point to the potential for increased stigma, exploitation and even harassment. 
there's also the issue of enforcement. How will the government track down every OnlyFans model in Ukraine? And how will they ensure they're paying their fair share? These are legitimate concerns, and the government needs to tread carefully. Transparency and dialogue with sex workers will be crucial in ensuring the law's success. Section 9. The Future of Ukraine's OnlyFans.